Well, Charlotte's panel didn't get to talk too much about green finance, but I'm sure if we gave them another hour, they could have done. And coming up next will be two very interesting addresses from heads of state. The first is a presentation by the president of Estonia, Kirsti Kaljulaid, who will be touching on the topic of national priorities for green finance. The Singapore FinTech Festival goes the extra mile. Meanwhile, we want to show you our gratitude for being a part of the FinTech Festival this year. We know that there is a lot to digest from hundreds of sessions with more than 800 speakers. And indeed, we have a couple of presidents coming up this hour. Uh, but in case you've missed any of the panels or the fireside conversations or the sessions which have come before, you will be able to access all of those recordings. They've been nicely organized into 14 themes, and you can get them anytime on YouTube from the 12th of December. That is this coming weekend. You don't need a login, nothing like that. Just click and go. And for all of our paying delegates, we have something very special for you guys. You'll receive a specially curated four-part SFF 2020 Insights Report. It covers all the sessions featuring all of those speakers. There are hundreds of them, as well as partner content. So do also look out uh, for your SFF 2021 discount. There is a voucher exclusively for you. So I promised you that we would go over to President Kalulaid to hear her thoughts on green finance. And here she is. Hello, Singapore. Very happy to uh, hear from you. And I just uh, happened to hear the last words of the previous panel and they were hope to see you in person next year. And I started thinking that, uh, no, for 20, 30 minute presentations, we have learned this year that you do not need to go anywhere. Estonia is currently the member of United Nations Security Council. And we proposed a digital solution for the meetings during our presidency there in spring. And you know, that company was later retained by the UN as a digital partner for organizing digital fora, because indeed it is necessary that we sometimes meet just to forge new relations, but actually we can do much more with technology and online. It was very hard to convince the world that uh, this is the future of not only digital, but also green and clean that we will do much less of this kind of meetings where we take the plane, fly to London or Frankfurt, have our little discussion how to, for example, finance our next M&A deal. I've done it, I know. And then sit back in the plane and go back home. No, we wouldn't do this anymore. We have learned this year, and I believe in this sense, this Black Swan, which has been this pandemic, which is a tragic event for the whole humankind. But the elements which we should take with us into the future is that much cleaner tech-related objectives should be how we also exit this difficult time for all of us. And the message from Estonia, overall, I could say, I could expand it easily for Nordic countries here in Europe is that uh, indeed, Europe is at the forefront of public leadership for green change. You all know that Europe is going to exercise of what from economic viewpoint looks like a market distortion, which says that by 2050, the price of the CO2, if you emit it in Europe, will be infinite. You cannot really emit CO2 in Europe. Right now, Europe is at the situation where this pledge has been made. Some member states even say they want to achieve it earlier. And Europe is looking for the ways and means on how to close our clean bubble so that no ecological dumping can happen to this clean bubble. Now, for me, this is the signal for the private sector including fintech, including the financial sector, to come in and help us to fulfill our bubble with green, clean technologies. In principle, we could say that uh, green 
is already, if you take it as a greenfield development, interesting, greenfield didn't mean the same exactly. I mean, maybe it will now change the meaning. The greenfield development for en energy installations, for example, in Europe, you would see that they are not even more expensive anymore than are the old ones. But we still need to create this regulated bubble of a market distortion. And you know why? Because we have lots and lots of old installations which use gas, coal, other fuels which emit CO2. And they are there, they're depreciated. But they are able to sell based on varied costs only for long decades ahead. This is not acceptable. We do not have patience. We want this to change quickly. And that's why we have made the promise, dear financial sector, dear investors ready to invest into Europe, we are creating a market for green technologies. Some European common banks, like European Investment Bank, have gone even further personally. European Investment Bank has said, for example, they will not uh, supply any finance already now for the intermediate cycle. Intermediate cycle is something which we call here in Europe that if you are lazy to go straight to the green technologies, then you say, I still have 30 years, I can invest into oil or gas consuming technologies, and then I will depreciate them over the coming 30 years. For some, and I would have to say, this is really appreciated by politicians. For some, this is not acceptable. For example, 33 Estonian uh, digital companies have made a pledge that they will be completely environmentally sustainable by 2030. By 2030, it's much quicker than there is the demand from the political field. But they as companies see that this rise is also their capability to be present in the world, to sell, to attract finance. This is clearly turning into something which has value. If you are able to report on your cleanliness, you will get cheaper finance. Why? Well, there is this official decision you cannot emit in Europe CO2 post-2050. There are steps which will be taken to make sure that already sooner this green bubble will be the only thing you want to invest in Europe. And then, of course, there is an understanding that European countries, even if they all, well, a flush with public money, you know, countries have learned really to create money from nothing nowadays, and the central banks have learned to, well, clean up the market so that even inflation doesn't rise, only asset prices, and this is a real worry from macroeconomic viewpoint, that asset prices, real estate prices are absorbing a lot of this excess money on the markets. But on the other hand, it is quite clear that public sectors in Europe, despite having the resources, will not invest into clean production capacity. Why they wouldn't do it? Because we don't want to run even higher fiscal deficits than we have to run to make sure that our social systems, health services and education systems are functioning. We need to cut back from this crisis, yes, also in the fiscal sense of the world. And without smart finance, we wouldn't be able to do this. Without smart finance, how on earth would private companies of Europe invest into this green market? So how we see the game here is that we guarantee the green technologies, the market, by saying that is the European clean bubble. And then we see that private companies together with financial sector will actually fulfill this market with clean products. This is about Europe, but if I look globally, then I see that this black swan of COVID-19 has also changed something very fundamental in our thinking. 
We have been considering the services market, something which is rather more local, and the market for goods, trading goods, as global. Again, the trend existed long before, but the production markets have been going more regional and the services markets have been more open. But now, when the whole developed world has learned that at least 30% of all of our jobs are geography neutral, which means you can do them from wherever. You can work from Singapore as a financial assistant here in Estonian Bank. You can work as a bookkeeper, for example, for a multilateral company wherever global. We in Estonia have understood it long ago. We have offered e-residency for people from third countries to be able to work within Estonian digital technological bubble. But we believe that the Black Swan, when it landed, made this within a couple of weeks clear to everybody that services market is not any more linked to a concrete point on this globe. You don't have to go to the office to do a lot of work. So we will see now how this will radically change how our economic thinking goes. What will happen is as big as was transfer from agricultural economy to industrial-based economy. In agriculture, most people earn their living before industrial area. Now it is down to three to 5% of our workforce. In industry, we will see the same. But of course, the logistics change, the service aspect around the agriculture is much bigger than the 3% of the workforce who work there today. Now we will see the same to happen in industry. What does it mean? It means that, for example, if you need to well, you need to get the part for some machine. Maybe it's an old machine and it's not easily on the market. Or maybe you have a factory which produces something which needs a, a part, a plastic part from somewhere. So nowadays, you can very simply ask somebody from far away to design what you need. Somebody from Fiji might design a piece of equipment for somebody who needs this, uh, this equipment in Helsinki, in Finland, for example. And then in the future, you would simply find the closest factory line, which will probably be called 3D printer. We call everything 3D printers nowadays, to finally give you the good. This is how I see this clean production chain will be supported by global services market. And again, all this is sustainable when we are exiting this pandemic, only in the case if the fintech, if the financial technology companies, and also big banks, but I would challenge, I don't know which one understands the new technology developments better, that the financial sector in general needs to understand that they can trust these global trends of development. They can invest into companies which for them become actually far less tangible. It's so important that you understand that in this part of the green finance, which means that we need to move less goods and we need to move more services, this is very green, that you accept that company in the future looks more like a high number of product teams put together from people from various services markets, from people from various parts of the world, and the product, the industrial product, the good, is only one part of this project team, which is printed out closest to the consumer. I think it is much more difficult to understand this part of green finance than it is simply to uh, finance, let's say, uh, a windmill uh, in uh, Nordic Sea, and, the Baltic, and also the Baltic Sea offshore wind grid. That is easy to understand, and that's already competitive. And that all you need is to make sure that, I mean, uh, the green, green pledges will be kept and, and uh, emissions of CO2 will not be allowed. This is all fine and dandy. But this is, I mean, the, the simplest, the first, the easiest part of green finance. 
what I'm talking here is much more complex, bigger change, but it is happening as well. Pandemic made it already visible. We need to push also this green aspect of our economies, which will indeed change much bigger parts than simple energy production or steel production of our economies. It will give a single person a much bigger power on the market because they can work in various countries at the same time, design different parts of whatever for different companies. I can order a dress design for my next, uh, well, Estonian, Estonian uh, national anniversary from a designer from wherever. Somebody will simply have to manufacture it here. So it will be kind of mass production, which will be individualized. And people will work totally differently. How would you in financial sector understand this thing as a company, as a project worth financing, as an enterprise, if it has loose partners who deal with them, loose chain of factories who produce for them? But this is the enterprise of the future the green enterprise for the future. I would advise you not only to concentrate what we already see now, but to concentrate also on what will happen. It's also happening already, but we haven't really, well, consciously accepted it is. What will happen in a decade or two? Maybe here in Estonia, because we have a digital public sector, all Estonian digital services run online, you cannot get married online, but uh, it's not because of technology. We, we have kind of uh, attachment to this procedure, which doesn't allow it. And we see perhaps behind the first curve, our e-residents who are global, I'm sure there are also some in Singapore, many in Asia, in fact. They all know that we in Estonia don't pay any attention to where somebody finds themselves in a given moment of time. What we only value is safe and secure access and identification to participate in our digital ecosystem. Of course, for green, also we must remember that um, data is anyway the new coal and the new gold. In green smart grids of electricity, there will be lots and lots of space for smart solutions. And again, Estonia has already a smart grid. My time is running out. I would only like to invite you all who want to test the peak shifting technologies on a smart grid, which really exists. Finance these kind of companies or are these kind of companies. You are very welcome to Estonia. You don't have to physically come. You can do it all online. Welcome to Estonia and the best of luck to fintech. We need private sector to get this green turn done in Europe and globally. And thank you for your efforts. We thank you so much, Her Excellency Kirsty Kalyulaid, who is the President of the Republic of Estonia, inviting you all to check out the leaps and bounds of development uh, that Estonia has achieved when it comes to uh, their e-economy. It is the home of the e-citizen. That was a really eye-opening address from the President there. We thank you so much for sharing your views and covering a topic of such major relevance for us all.